Just a quick update from our Port-au-Prince to Fort Lauderdale shuttle here and the progress we've made in Port-au-Prince, uh, specifically Carrefour, Carrefour um, in, uh, in Haiti. Um, over the past few days, we've made uh, a lot of headway. We've gotten a lot of supplies and a lot of people down in, down in um, Carrefour uh, by way of Port-au-Prince. Uh, things are going really well. Uh, last Friday, we had a, uh, a redundant system in the aircraft. One half of that redundant system failed, and so we had to stop our flights down to Port-au-Prince for a period until we could locate a piece that that part and um, resume those flights, replace it, or then resume those flights. Uh, specifically, and for those of you that are familiar with aircraft, uh, we had a magneto fail, and um, it uh, it ended up taking us out of commission for uh, two trips. Um, which ended up being Friday night and Saturday morning. really wasn't a big deal because so far we've been able to make one trip a day for, for a long period of time. So it's been fantastic. Things have been going out, going really well. Um, the, we've been encountering a little bit of difficulty getting fuel in Port-au-Prince um, and uh, you know, make, keeping our airplane running um, smoothly. Uh, last night during a post-flight inspection as I walked around the aircraft, I encountered a part on the um, on the side of the airplane, a piece on the side of the airplane, I should say, uh, that had uh, worked itself loose and kind of torn a little bit. Uh, not not a not a structural issue or even really a uh, a major issue, but we don't uh, we don't take an aircraft out unless it's 100% ready to go. Make sure that this thing's going to be a, a success every time. So we've uh, we've canceled that uh, for the uh, what was it tomorrow yesterday Sunday. So we've canceled the Sunday flight, uh, Sunday evening flight, and then of course the uh, Monday morning flight while we're getting this part fixed. We've got uh, maintenance working on it right now, and we'll be able to make our 2 o'clock departure here for Port-au-Prince. Right now the airplane's sitting on the ramp ready to go. That part is in maintenance. They're fabricating a, a backing reinforcement to it, and we're going to be good to go. Um, the airplane is full of tents, tarps, a little bit of uh, PVC piping for uh, some plumbing that we're doing down there, and uh, food, lots of food. Uh, we're trying to steer clear of buying stuff that we can get in Port-au-Prince, such as rice. But right now, uh, with uh, with some of our uh, locals gone and a, and a lack of vehicle, we haven't been able to drive out into the countryside and and procure the uh, the food that we need. So we're having to import it from the United States. It's not as cost effective as getting our food down there in Port-au-Prince, but um, you know we're doing what we have to do. We have to do to keep the uh, the ball rolling here. As you can hear, my voice has kind of gotten a little bit hoarse from all the. Uh, it's actually it's the air conditioning, so so it's uh, it's the luxury side of of uh, the United States that's kind of making me sick. Um, you know, you walk in from real humid and sweat and everything, and then you get air conditioning put blown right on your face. And, of course, they keep everything here about the, the temperature of a refrigerator. So, uh, you know, you could hang meat on the side of the wall here, and uh, it wouldn't go bad. But, uh, so I'm, I'm getting, I, I don't know if anybody else ever gets that, but I get kind of a, like a chest cold from that. <clears throat> so, nonetheless, despite how I sound, I feel really good. We've been, get, I've been getting some sleep here, and um, there for a while we were pulling, I was pulling um, pretty long hours, and, uh, it was pretty tough to keep keep my eyes open. Um, last night I got a full seven hours sleep after uh, about uh, probably getting seven hours within the past five days. So it's been it's been uh, great. It was nice to get woken up this morning by Todd uh, punching me in the arm. Um, must be an Anderson thing, but uh, it uh, it was nice to sleep in a bed. Um, in the past I've been sleeping in the back of the airplane and in Port-au-Prince or, or uh, on a couch here at the airport or whatever, wherever. <clears throat> um, we've so far flown tons of doctors down there. I think we're up to 10 doctors that we've flown into Port-au-Prince. We personally, with our, with our little mission, with our little group, we have a, a doctor down there. He's there indefinitely. I think he, he probably has to go back here within two weeks or something like that. But we do have a doctor down there. We've got the two or three nurses that we have down there. That's fantastic. We're kind of wrapping up this this whole emergency uh, medical issue and move it turning towards more towards long term care. 
uh, for the people that have sustained serious injuries, such as the back injuries or the infections that they're suffering. Um, we're also moving towards more of a uh, more of this this issue with the tents. Everybody's sleeping out the street. They're sleeping in alleyways um, and uh, on mattresses that they've pulled from the rubble. But uh, the problem is that that the minute it rains, we're going to have a, a serious issue. And if you think my chest cold is a problem, we've got we've got uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word the fecal matter all over the city. You know the the We've got we've got uh, so we still have some dead bodies in rubble, and we've got a lot of a lot of just things that are bad things that are going to happen if we don't have, have um, shelter for people when it does rain because we know it's coming. Eventually, it's got to rain. Um, the if you go to the weather channel, it, uh, it's forecasting you know 20 percent chance of rain for the next for 10 days. That's great, but the problem is when it does rain. Also, people are people are just standing out in the in the streets they're walking the streets there's nobody going in buildings right now or very few I should say uh, going into buildings right now so they're just completely exposed they're exposed to the cold at night and they're exposed to the heat in the day no shelter whatsoever these buildings as flimsy as they were at least they were cool in the in the in the hot sun um, so the fact of the matter is we need to start moving towards more towards a shelter uh, mode here the food is is still vital water is not so much vital we're really doing a good job getting a lot of water out there, getting filters out there, and um, and so water is not the immediate need. There's there's a lot of um, a lot of hunger, and a lot of shelter that needs to be taken care of still. So um, I just read in the news that uh, there's uh, an organization down there. I think it, I think it's the Red, uh, the uh, Red Cross, is sitting on ten thousand tents, and all they're saying is that they need a hundred thousand. Um, so. The fact that they've, and, and so it's in a warehouse. They've got 10,000 tents just sitting there. I'm telling you, if, we, when, if and when we get the money for these tents, we buy the tents right here, right now, we put them on a plane, and we put them up that day that they, the day that they get there. Every, everything that you give to this organization, uh, whether it's through the Sylvius's, whether it's through Full Life Crusade, or through the Warsaw Flying Club, it is going immediately into purchasing a tent for a family that needs it, and then right up into into a being being set up that day. I'm not going to say that the day you give us money is the day somebody gets a tent, but it's very close to that. It's a very immediate effect. Whereas you donate the money, or if literally give give them a tent to this organization, they're moving in such mass quantities that it takes uh, weeks. I'm telling you, they fill up a, a tank uh, or a. a, a uh, a ship of with with tents, and then they it sits in the port for a week, and then it takes a week to get down there, and it takes a week to unload it, and it takes another week for them to distribute it. By that time, we've got people dying of exposure. So these these big organizations organizations are doing a great job. They're they're filling a role that needs to be filled, but for immediate effect and for very very specific needs, going through a, uh, an organization like what we're doing is very immediate and very effective. Um, I, I want to convey how thankful all of us are for your support. I mean, we've gotten we've gotten so much prayer, so much uh, verbal support, so much financial support over the over the past week. It's just been awe inspiring. I want to thank you for all that. You guys have been so so wonderful to us. Um, I'm going to keep this video as short as I can. I'm going to sign off here in a sec, but I just I just want to thank you and, and encourage you to keep keep supporting us. I know that a lot of people have already given and if you know you give give what you can. If you can't give any more that's great. But if you can, it's it's vitally needed in this area. Another thing we're doing is we're also clearing a lot of rubble. Um, it, the more rubble we can clear, the more tents we can get up. So it's kind of a hand in hand thing. Uh, it costs money right now because the only excavators that are there on the field or on, not on the field but on the in the field um, in Port au Prince are being used hundred percent. They're going all the time. So you kinda have to you know, pay a premium if you're going to get uh, get some some uh, some your lot cleaned off. Um, we're working on getting an excavator down there, getting some uh, some uh, dump trucks and all that stuff. It's going to take time, but we are going to get our stuff down there. And we're going to start clearing out people's people's uh, property and 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 giving them tents and and uh, making sure that people are under under cover and have food to eat. Continue your, your support. We are so thankful for everything you've done. And um, continue to pray for us.